Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I deem it a great honor to have been asked to introduce Mrs. Madden, and certainly one that I would only have yielded were he available to the late Honorable Dr. Carlton Alexander. Mrs. Madden knows why I say this. The name Frances Madden is legendary within social work circles in Jamaica. Her work in the inner city communities across Jamaica spans some three decades, and the lives she has impacted number in the thousands. We at Grace Kennedy consider ourselves privileged to have been able to claim Frances Madden as a long-standing member of our family and one who has been invaluable in enhancing the respect and regard with which Grace Kennedy's reputation is held. Frances Madden joined Grace Kennedy in 1982 as a project officer assisting in, the establishing, in establishing economic projects on behalf of the Grace and Staff Community Development Foundation. She came to us after having gained her Bachelor of Science degree in social work at the University of the West Indies and having worked as a field officer in the Ministry of Local Government for eight years. Her passion for making a difference, empathy, and understanding of the people for whom she worked, that is, the members of the community, allowed her to firmly establish that bridge of care and understanding that the Grace and Staff saw as its mission within the communities that surrounded its major offices. Frances Madden not only became the face of grace and staff, but the counselor, mother, guide, and confidant for those in our nation who are often misunderstood and disregarded. After 15 years of intensive work, Frances took a break from the everyday hurly-burly of social work, but continued to serve in a consultancy capacity, offering training to guidance counselors, parents, social workers, development officers, community leaders, and the police on working in underserved areas. Francis returned to Grace and Staff in 2003, re-energizing and refocusing its activities. Since then, she has placed much emphasis on, on mediation among rival gangs to reduce violence. In carrying out this enormous and emotionally demanding program, Frances has always relied on the unfailing support of her husband, David Madden, one of Jamaica's master trumpeters, whose music you heard while you were waiting. Grace Kennedy has been proud to share Frances with the wider Jamaican community and, indeed, the world. Her experience and knowledge has been sought by several international bodies, including the Department of International Development, DFID, Inter-American Development Bank, the IDB, International Training and Agricultural, Agricultural Development, ITAD, United Nations Development Program, UNDP, United States Agency for International Development, USAID, and the Canadian International Development Agency, CEDA. Her journey would take her to Istanbul, Turkey, on the invitation of the World Bank to be the keynote speaker at their international forum. Her presentation on the effects of violence on women's access to services was published in several languages in 27 countries over the world. Locally, her work for agencies such as the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, the Citizen Security and Justice Program, and the Social Development Commission in garnering information for infrastructural development and establishment of community-based organizations, governance structures has allowed them to take responsibility for projects in the post-implementation period. Francis's publications include a book, Understanding Your Communities, and a presentation manual, Wholeness for Children, among, among many other research projects and articles. The breadth and depth of her knowledge and experience undoubtedly make her eminently suitable to present this lecture. She comes to us with even greater advantages. Above all, Francis is an outstanding raconteur. 
Her stories are factual, vivid, and, of, and told often with wit and humor, and always with sensitivity and understanding. Please help me to welcome our 2011 Grace Kennedy Foundation lecturer, Mrs. Frances Madden. There's a lot of things I have to do before I start. And after all that experience that Mr. Moss spoke about, you should know which one is the first, as we put it on. And then I need to get some water over here. When you're going to chat enough, you have to have enough water. And so we can now, I won't begin yet, but I'll tell you a little story, since I like stories. Somebody asked me one day, where was Grace Kennedy? I said, you don't know where Grace Kennedy is located? I said, Grace Kennedy is everywhere. One, they are between the devil and the deep blue sea. <laughs> and the second one is between the rock and a hard place. So wherever you go, and that looked like the place, that is where Grace Kennedy is. And true to saying, Grace Kennedy is at Harbor Street, and you know the deep blue seas in front of us. And we have Junker Town right to the side. Those persons from downtown know Junker Town. And we have the lane. So you know, we have all the troubles that we can afford. So this afternoon, I'm going to be speaking a lot about inner cities some of the issues confronting inner city persons with a view that people will understand, understand the dynamics, and at the same time will think twice sometimes when we ask for help in inner city, because we have a tendency to brush it aside, but we do need help. In Jamaica, the operations of Grace Kennedy is located on the periphery of several inner city communities. These communities are characterized by high levels of violence, lack of economic options for residents, and a sense of powerlessness among community members. This presentation is reflective of the experiences of the Grace and Staff Foundation from 1979 to the present. It will highlight issues surrounding historical overview of community conditions, socio-cultural and socio-economic, as well as provide an insight into the local dynamics and changes associated with community members and their attitude to self-development. These details will be interspersed with responses from the Grace and Staff Community Foundation to the historical and contemporary community challenges. Within the Caribbean, informality, networking, and hustling have been cemented as part and parcel of the culture of subsistence for the marginalized. The informality and subsistence approach to living has become the backbone of the survival strategies of the urban poor, particularly in Jamaica. Economic vulnerability, particularly during the 1980s and 90s, was significant as a result of the economic transformation taking place at the time. This process had a severely negative impact on the urban poor, where livelihood and survival depended in large part on the structure and agency of opportunities that were made available to them. The almost relentless spate of hardships experienced by the already marginalized poor fostered increases in illicit activities prostitution, extortion, trading in narcotics, petty thievery and robbery, as well as money laundering and the propensity to participate in criminal activities. 